we're all excited right now about the Super Bowl. <clears throat> I got to thinking about this as a coach. Man, that's an exciting time. Everybody getting ready. Well, what those coaches are doing right now is crafting game plans. And so I thought what I would do is try and cover with you what I think is one of the keys to the upcoming Super Bowl. And that's going to be pass protection. <laughs> and discussing that, I'd like to go back and talk about the championship games. We know that New England was playing the Ravens. Okay, and in that game, the pass protection game plan for New England, I felt like it was a good one. Brady got hit one time. Okay, he actually got hit three times, sacked once. Okay, so that's a pretty good day for the quarterback. The Ravens, on the other side of that, Joe Flacco, he got sacked three times. He was hit another seven times. And as a consequence, when you get a quarterback hit, that definitely is going to affect their play. Now, for me, when we were out scouting, looking for quarterbacks, over the years, I coached some of the best out there, whether it was Dan Fouts or uh, Doug Williams or Rippon or Theismann. Those guys are all real smart. That was part of what we looked for. But one of the key things for a quarterback is toughness. And people say, what? What are you talking about? I'm saying that quarterbacks have to be extremely tough for this reason, physically and mentally. They're going to go back, and many times they're what? They're in positions where they're trying to throw a football. They're not defending themselves, and they're getting hit. I've stood on that sideline. Any quarterback that gets hit, if you hit them enough, any quarterback, I don't care how tough they are, all those guys are extremely tough. When they come to that sideline, <laughs> you're going to see in their eyes, that's tough for them. It's a physical thing. Then as a consequence, what happens late in the game, they start throwing off their back foot or start making bad decisions because they're what, trying to get the ball out of there okay, to protect themselves and keep from getting hit. I don't care how tough you are. So in the game, the Pats, Ravens, we saw that definitely New England, with their game plan, kept their quarterback, Brady, from being hit a lot. As a consequence, you know they wind up winning the ball game, although he was off on a few throws. I don't think it was caused from being hit. Now let's take the Giants versus the 49ers in the championship game. A little different story there. The Giants, Eli, he was sacked six times and he was hit 12. Okay, now you're talking about a quarterback getting knocked around quite a bit in the ball game. The 49ers did a good job on the pass rush. As a consequence, we saw in the fourth quarter, Eli, which is not characteristic for him, was what? Throwing off his back foot some. It probably threw three balls in there that could have been picked off. So you'd have to say now, we've got the matchup coming up now in the Super Bowl with the Pats and the Giants. I think one of the keys of this game is who has the best game plan for pass protection. Now, what happens to teams in the NFL, if they're keeping their tight ends and backs in, this is a typical offensive formation, what you're going to see is much easier to pass protect because what? Say this is play action on first or second down, and you've got that quarterback making a play action. You've got extra tight ends and uh, in the ball game. Now you can do what? Run your deep receiving routes. But you, odds are you're going to get pretty good pass protection as long as you got tight ends in, backs, you got play action protection. That's a, that's a, that's a great scheme. Okay, now. What's become the rage, though, in the NFL, we're seeing what? Even on first downs, many times, they're putting the quarterback back in the shotgun. Okay, so they've got him back. All right. Lots of times with one remaining back, they'll put him in the shotgun, and they'll actually put, okay, four receivers out wide. Okay, now, this is the rage right now, what taking place in the league. All right, now... You put four wide receivers in there. You split everybody out. Now what are you doing with those pass rushing experts that we got over here that have been drafted, some of the best athletes in the league, New England. Sometimes they're in a 4-3, sometimes they're in a 34. Mark Anderson, 10 sacks. Andre Carter got hurt, he'll be out of the game. Rob Nikovich, okay, linebacker, outside pass rusher, Sean Ellis, Brandon Diedrich. All these guys are excellent pass rushers. They're going to be looking to put pressure on Eli. How about the Giants pass rushers? Okay, Jason Pierre-Paul, Osi Humanera. These guys are great pass rushers. Justin Tuck, 
Those guys are great athletes on the outside, been drafted to be great athletes. Okay, what's the problem? You split everybody out. There's no presence of tight ends here. Okay, plus the offensive tackles are put in a bad position because of what? The crowd noise. Hey, in Super Bowls, I've been in them, four of them. There's a lot of crowd noise. It's tough for these guys to hear the snap count many times. They get off late. Plus, there's nothing here to keep these great athletes from starting outside moves and going inside. There's no presence of a tight end here. And so you give them, what, a lot of space. And that becomes a problem on pass protection. Now, at times, sometimes the offenses are even taking the back out and putting him on the outside. And they actually have nobody left in the backfield. And again, this is putting what? A high priority on the two tackles, putting them in a bad position. It's hard for them to hear. They get off on a bad set, and you're giving these great athletes a lot of room to rush the passer. As a consequence, you've got to have a great game plan. Most of the time, with four wide receivers or five wide receivers, this quarterback has to throw quick routes, six-yard breaking routes. Now, you start trying to get this ball downfield, Okay, with these sets, no tight ends in there, on the game plan, you start trying to throw the ball deep, and what you do is what? You put the quarterback at risk. So I think having a great game plan is very important on pass protection. Now, what are some of the things that you can do if you're finding that you're having problems with pass protection? Well, what you can do, you can actually keep a tight end in the ball game, Keep a running back in the ball game, so you can put a tight end in here, put the running back in here, and now you wind up with three wide receivers to run your routes. But here's what you pick up now. That tight end, by having body presence here, it makes it a lot easier with that end on the pass rush. And the tight end can actually chip before he runs his inside routes or outside routes. He can be chipping the back. And this is what I noticed that the Giants did late in the game on their pass protection. Kept a tight end in, kept the back end from the standpoint of what he would do is chip, get a shot on that end before he would release on his pass route. Now you've got a tight end on one side helping the, the offensive tackle, or you've got the running back on one side helping the offensive tackle and chipping. Okay, that's the scheme they went to. Makes a lot more sense because now you can throw your downfield routes and you're taking care of these pass rushers out here with this scheme. Uh, obviously, one other thing you could do is have two backs in the backfield, two running backs back here, and let both of them chip before they go out on their pass routes. So the schemes that they have for the Super Bowl, I think, for New England, okay, it's going to be real important to have a great pass protection scheme and certainly for the Giants. I don't think they want to repeat what the 49ers did to them. They do not want to have Eli getting hit like that. I would think in, in their game plan, they're definitely going to have a situation where they can put two backs in there or they can keep a tight end in the game and wind up with a good pass protection scheme. So game plans, game plans in the Super Bowl, I think this will be one of the keys. If you're sitting at home and I'm sitting at home, I'm going to see how many times that quarterback's getting hit. Because <laughs> I know what? That's going to affect his play in the fourth quarter. So you got to have a great game plan. All right, how about you and I in life? Okay, we're playing a game. Do we have a great game plan? Okay, that's the reason that we wrote game plan for life. Just like in football, got to have a great game plan. Okay, in life, you got to have a great game plan. We wrote game plan for life and really what we did here is we went out in America and we asked America what are the topics that you need to have success in to have a modern day successful life to win the game to win the game of life it came back 11 topics those 11 topics you can imagine they were uh, everything from health relationships creation of how we got here salvation heaven where are we going there are 11 topics here. I'll list all of them for you. And we, we, here's what we did. You don't want the football coach writing about those 11 topics for you. What we did is went out and picked a scholar that has spent his life studying 
what God has to say in his word about these different topics. And really when it came back, we asked those, those, those scholars to write for the average Joe, as people like yourself, like me. Okay, we asked them to write, what's the game plan in each one of those different areas? And then my story is kind of weaved through this book to show you what an average Joe, the guy that's the PE major, okay, going through life, when I followed God's game plan, okay, I had some measure of success, whether it's in my coaching career, my family, or whatever else. And when I veered away from it, it's in this book, some of the disasters I've had, a financial disaster, an occupational struggle, a health disaster, because I did what? I veered away from God's game plan. So I just say to you, we'd love to have you go to GamePlanForLife.com. You can see where you can get the book, Game Plan for Life. Also, on that website, you can see where to get a small group study. We did a small group study, okay, that Lifeway did. And at GamePlanForLife.com, you go to that website, you can see where you can get a small group study should you want it. The lead-ins to this were taped here around a racing uh, background, or we went to a football complex and did it around football complex. It's, uh, I think, a very interesting study. You can get all 11 topics, if you want, from Lifeway. And then, if you go to that GamePlanForLife.com, we would like to send you, should you want one, just a little New Testament study Bible. This is called The Essentials of the Christian Faith, and it's Game Plan for Life. I've been using this for 35 years, and we've been sending this out. I used this for my two sons, J.D. and Coy, as they were growing up. We would take one of the little 15 topics that are in here on a study, and you can do it in about 15 minutes. I would take them through that at night before we went to bed. I'm now doing this with my grandsons and my granddaughter. So this little New Testament study Bible will send you free. If you'd like to have that, we'd love for you to go to the website. That's GamePlanForLife.com. I just want to tell you, I'm excited about the Super Bowl. I'm going to be looking for the game plans. Hopefully you and I have a great game plan for life, and I want to thank you for joining me.